What's going on everybody? It's CC Sports here with the video and today we're going to be playing Out of the Park Baseball 2025. This game came out just a week ago and it was on sale for the release week and I picked it up and I'm going to be playing through the main game mode of the game, the management mode. So when I bought this game. I haven't played an Out of the Park game since Out of the Park 21. I haven't bought one since Out of the Park 21, but I have played Out of the Park 21 uh, multiple times over the past three, four years, but I decided to pick up the newest version. So basically why I didn't play any Out of the Park games since Out of the Park 21 was mainly because of the developers losing the rights to Nippon Professional Baseball, the Japanese Baseball League. So now they don't have any of the Japanese players that are coming through the pipeline. They didn't have Yoshinobu Yamamoto, for example, Kodai Sengo when he was added until he got to the league. So that really took some of the realism away from me. But I figured, you know what, it's not a terrible thing because, sure, the Japanese players are great, but it only makes up what? five six really good players because you still have Jung Hoo Lee and guys like that from Korea and other Asian countries coming through to the United States to play baseball so I figured it wasn't too unrealistic that I could continue to play realistically without players coming over from Japan it's unfortunate but it is what it is we're here we're playing this game I haven't opened it yet as you can see I still I got the opening pop-ups right now so i gotta go through these really quick the game comes with screen tutorials a comprehensive online and in-game manual video tutorials which will give you a brief introduction forums for the fans to discuss the game mods and tools and we also have a very active discord channel please have a look so i will not do the dialogue but i will enable the screen tutorials because what i want to do is i want to get more people to play this game because not enough people play this game this game is amazing for the baseball gurus like me that are huge fans of baseball and the whole management side of it and how all that works. Like I'm a nerd for this kind of stuff and I feel like there's a bunch of people out there that also feel the same way that I do that have not gotten that chance or that are unaware of this game and how much fun it is. So I'm going through and I'm gonna play, I'm gonna go through the tutorials for you guys just to make sure that you guys know what you're doing when you guys decide to pick up the game. So let's rock. So this is the, okay, I'll just accept that. You can track how you play the game, example which screens you visit most frequently. I'll do that, yeah, sure, why not? So this is the main screen. It's basically the same as Out of the Park 21. This is the last time I played. They now have rights to Hall of Fame, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, where they have a bunch of Hall of Fame, um, just data and accuracy, I guess little cool things they haven't really been added yet it looks like so we're a little early to the party in that regard but we are going to start a brand new game of out of the park starting from this 2024 season where we can take over a team so now this menu is a little new drive for the pennant coming soon start a new challenge to play through the current season so they have a real starting um a real time start mode so that's pretty cool you can do a historical exhibition. You can play the 1914 Dodgers against the 1986 Mets or something like that if you wanted to do that. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to do a standard game. Uh, there's historical. You can pick any season in MLB history from 1871 to 2023 and take over those teams and create your own sort of baseball lore in a way. But what we are going to do is we are going to start a new standard game. Uh, this is challenge mode. If you enable challenge mode for the game you are about to create, you'll experience a whole new way to play out of the park. You'll enjoy streamlined gameplay, collect new achievements and awards, and face extra challenges when building your baseball dynasty. We want to make this as realistic as possible, and it disables certain features that we need to make this game, as I mentioned, as realistic as possible. So I'm not going to enable challenge mode. But here are all the leagues that we can do. We have the rights to the KBO, MLB Partner Leagues, uh, the Dutch League, the British League, and the World Cup of Baseball, which is the World Baseball Classic under a different name. 
So there's a live start, but we will not do a live start. Uh, we'll call this playthrough. Okay, so it's gonna get everything loaded up. So let's talk about how I'm gonna do this. So you can select a specific team and take them over and manage their whole system and try to take them from wherever they are currently in the standings and try to win a championship with them. Same thing as franchise mode in MLB The Show, but it's a little more realistic than that. Well, a little more, a lot more realistic than that. You can manage all the minor leagues all the way down to, I'm pretty sure you can do the Dominican leagues. So there's a lot within this game that you can do. It's very, very diverse. There's so much customization in all this that it's it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> So I took a little bit of time to decide what team I wanted to do. Basically, the criteria I was going to do was that I wanted a team that was really, really good two years ago, but then struggled last year. So I can take over a team, I guess, and you could consider it before the downfall. So there were a few teams that I had to choose from. I leveled it to about four teams. It was the Guardians, the Cardinals, the White Sox. All three, well, in the Guardians and Cardinals case, they had really high expectations last year, but then failed to meet those expectations. In the Cardinals case, failed miserably. And the White Sox have just been on the start of a downfall, just downward spiral, and it's only going to get worse this year. So it wasn't a bad team to choose, <clears throat> but I wanted to choose a team with a very dramatic, the more, I ended up choosing the team with the most dramatic fall off of any of the teams that I could choose. And when that's all ready, I'll go to that, and I'll show you guys who I chose. Make sure if you're new, you like and subscribe. I'm going to be making this a new series on my channel. I'm going to try to get back into making videos. So here we go. So we can choose from any of these leagues. There you go, all the way down to Dominican Rookie Ball. You could do the KBO, British League, Dutch League. Atlantic League, American Association, Pioneer League, Frontier League, or World Cup. Or not World Cup, um, what's it called? World Baseball Classic. So here we go, the 30 teams. I'm choosing the New York Mets. Now, if you guys know me, I'm a massive New York Mets fan. So there's a, I don't want, I want to say a smidge of bias, but if there was a team that had a dr more dramatic fall off than the New York Mets, I would have chosen that team. But another thing that I was thinking about I consider myself pretty knowledgeable about baseball as a whole. Like, I can take over any team here, I think, and I can manage them pretty well. The Mets, I will know so much better than anybody else, simply because I'm a Mets fan. I've watched them. I've been a fan of them for 15 years almost. So I kind of have an idea of who every player is. I know their system front and back. I know their coaches. I can give you great analysis on just about every player on the team because I've seen them play so much. So we are going to, all these settings really don't matter, nationality, gender, date of birth, name. That's just to make it all more realistic. I don't really care about that. I'm gonna be just the general manager, I think. I'm not gonna be the manager just because I want the manager to be its own separate entity in this game or have its own separate identity. So I'm not going to take over and be both the general manager and the manager because that's sort of unrealistic in my eyes because when I, if I take over a team, I'm not going to end up being both the general manager and the manager. That's a lot. So being the general manager is realistic enough. This is going to be a mode simulation where I try to be as realistic as I possibly can. right? I don't want to do anything over my head that's just way too unrealistic that you look at and you just say, that's just never going to happen. So I'm going to be the general manager of the New York Mets, who had a great, great year two years ago, 2022, had 102 wins, I think it was, and we ended up falling flat on our faces in the NLDS, or the wild card. Yeah, it was the wild card, because we didn't win the division, thanks to the Braves, but we ended up, yeah, falling flat on our faces. We couldn't hit for nothing, and lost in three games to the San Diego Padres. I'll go over the whole story of the team and 
you know, how they've been in the last couple of years in a few seconds. Once I get this all loaded up, commissioner mode allows for more control. I don't really need that. I'm going to turn on the cannot be firing feature, cannot be fired feature, because I don't want to get fired. I want this to be a rebuild of the team. I want to take it at my own pace. I don't want to end up getting fired right when I feel like the team's about to hit their stride, you know, because I have no interest in switching teams in this. I'd want to be the Mets from the beginning all the way to the end. So we're going to start this. All right, so it's going to be saving. So yeah, the Mets have a long story since Steve Cohen took over. Obviously, I have Steve Cohen's budget, which is really good for me, but it's not really what I want, you know? I can really build a powerhouse with this, which isn't terrible, but I'm certainly going to try to use it to my advantage, right? So welcome to OOTP. These tutorials will aim to break down the different screens for you while you play. If you choose to disable them, you will always be able to turn them back on in the game settings. <clears throat> the top section contains drop down menus that will be your primary way of navigating directly to other screens, changing settings, playing out games, and advancing days. These menus will always be located here. And that's up near the top. The continue button can also be used to advance the game and you can configure it to suit your own personal game flow. This lower area is where you will find the content of each screen. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. So this game has just been created. I suggest that you meet your team first then set up your control options and decide which aspects of team management you want to control and what kind of news you want to get via manager mail. You can also set when to stop autoplay, for example, on a player injury. Okay, so let's go to meeting the team. Welcome to the team home screen. Here you'll see an overview of the team, including the roster, injuries, and more. <clears throat> you can change individual sections of this screen by using these menu dropdowns. And use this button to adjust the overall layout of the screen to your liking. Okay, so they do have all the injuries here. They have Kodai Senga's injury. They have Ronnie Mauricio's injury, David Peterson has a sip strain, and Max Kranich is out for four weeks. Okay. Let's take a look at this team. Let's meet the players. So let's do meet the team. <clears throat> this is not necessarily what I want. Hold on. How do I... Let's go to rosters and transactions. How do I look at the depth chart? That's what I want to look at. This screen offers a full view, full overview of all the team's rosters. The legend for symbols on this screen can be found here. Okay. So we will go um, overview roster, injured list. No. Okay. How about lineups? Welcome to the, here we go. Welcome to the team lineup screen. If you control the team, here you can view your team's batters and set your lineups. Drag and drop players to move them around. So let's go to graphical depth chart. Here we go. So this is where we take a look at what we have for our depth, at least when it comes to our hitters. So let's start from the bottom. Francisco Alvarez, catcher, three and a half stars, four star potential. That is not really what it, that doesn't look like him at all. But anyway, he's the big man. We knew last year he was the New York Mets number one prospect, super hyped up for his power. Very, very strong hitter. 25 home runs last season. He's got to get his OPS up a little bit. But that's something that comes with time as he gets more used to playing in the big leagues. So he's expected last year, he got called up around midway through the year. And now he's expected to be our full-time catcher. And on the days where he has off, he'll be replaced by Omar Narvaez, which is not a terrible backup whatsoever. Great defender. Has the potential to hit for great power, but just has not shown that in a Mets uniform yet. Let's see, first base, we got Pete Alonso. Everybody knows Pete Alonso. Great power hitter, one of the best power hitters in the game. Has hit 30, at least 35 every single year of his big league career, besides 2020, which was obviously the shortened season due to COVID. Second base, Jeff McNeil. 
Uh, had a little bit of an off year. I would say last year his OPS was not really where you want it to be. You want him to do a little better, but he is an all-star caliber player. Same thing with Francisco Lindor, but Lindor has not been bad at all lately. 31 home runs, his career high, not his career high, but his highest in a Mets uniform. So we look for him to keep that up. He's hitting age 30, so I don't know how, how well he's going to age. We got Joey Wendell at third, not Brett Beatty, which is interesting. Is Brett Beatty in the minors? I would assume he is. Where's the AAA roster? Here it is. Let's see. Brett Beatty is currently chilling in the minors. Okay. We might have to call him up, honestly. Yeah, uh, that's not great. We just not have the rights to G-Man Choi. I guess that's G-Man Choi, right? Here we go. On this screen, you can see an overview of the player selected, including their ratings, stats, and more. You can dive further into these player attributes on the other tabs. Use this menu to perform available actions on the selected player. These actions can also be found while on any other screen by right-clicking on the player's name. Okay, yeah. So this is G-Man Choi. I have no idea why we don't have the rights to his name. It's a little weird. But yeah, we have Brett Beatty in AAA for now. Eventually he's going to get called up because I, or he should get called up right away because I do not see any reason why Joey Wendell should be starting at this level, especially at two stars. So looking back at the depth chart we have left field Tyrone Taylor which should be Brandon Nemo because center field we have um, Harrison Bader we signed him free agency but I don't know if it's updated where we signed him or if he's also in the minor league he is also in the minor league so we should bring Harrison Bader up because that is what it is like in real life so I'll make those changes in a little bit but I clicked the wrong button. This screen provides a full overview of the team's finances. Here you can edit items such as ticket prices and expenses during the preseason. You can customize the layout of this screen and view other financial information using these drop down menus. All right, yeah. So going back to the graphical depth chart, we got Tyrone Taylor in left field instead, who we got as a free agent from Milwaukee. Like I said, I don't expect him to be the starting left fielder, but even if he is, it's not terrible. Our depth is pretty good. We got Trace Thompson, Clay's brother, Clay Thompson's brother in free agency. Played for the Dodgers and the White Sox last year. Was not great according to the stats, but he's someone that I have very high hopes for. He should develop well. Brandon Nimmo in center field mentioned he's a great, very underrated defender, I think. And on base machine, he is the easy choice for the top slot in our batting order. Game in and game out. Has a great eye. And uses that to draw very many walks and also gets hit by pitches quite a bit. Starling Marte in right field had an off year last year. At age 35, it's quite unclear to see if this is a very important year in Starling Marte's career to see if he continues on that downward trajectory or if that was just a blip in the radar and he's back to the Starling Marte that we know and love. So Tyrone Taylor backing him up, Trace Thompson. We got Mark Vientos can play left field. He's another one of those baby Mets, as they're called, along with Francisco Alvarez and Brett Beatty. Mark Vientos had a job with the team last year as a DH, but it clearly looks here that he's being replaced by G Man Choi, or Dong Hyuk Lee, as he's called here. And Luke Voigt, who we also brought back. We had him, let him go. He went to Milwaukee, was awful there, and we decided to bring him back. So that's what the batting looks like with this team. Mark Vientos on the bench. Mentioned that. Pinch hitters, we got Narvaez, Vientos, Voigt, and Thompson. That's at least against righties. Against lefties, it doesn't really look much different besides Luke Voigt playing DH. And then G Man Choi moving to the bench. So if you choose to use daily lineups, the screen is where you can control them. The daily lineups allow you to specify your starter and lineup for specific upcoming days. Okay, so let's take a look at the pitching on this team. 
Welcome to the team pitching screen. If you control the team, here you can view your team's pitchers, set your rotation, and define your bullpen roles. Drag and drop players to move them around. So taking a look at our team, uh, we mentioned it before with the injured list. We have Kodai Senga. He is out for two to three months with his strained shoulder, which is unfortunate because he came over from Japan. Was amazing, amazing, really good in Japan. And was arguably one of the best pitchers in baseball last year. 298 ERA, 147 ERA plus, but did not win Rookie of the Year. Lost out to Corbin Carroll, which is justifiable, but also I have my case for why Kodai Senga should have won it. That's for another day, because we're looking through this team right now. We got Jose Quintana, who missed a bit of time at the beginning of the year last year, but for the time that he did play, he was very solid. Because of the injury, we had to kind of make some changes to our starting lineup, move guys around, so Jose Quintana will be our opening day starter. Luis Severino is our second guy. We got him from the Yankees last year. Very injury-prone guy. That's one thing with these free agency signings that the Mets got. Severino, Hauser, guys like that. Very injury-prone guys. But if they're able to stay healthy, they have good potential. But there's a lot, a lot of uncertainty with the starting rotation, both from a performance standpoint and a health standpoint. So it's hard to say exactly where they're going to go. Luis Severino is the second starter. As you see right there, 6.65 ERA last year in 19 games. That is not a very good stat line whatsoever. Hoping for a little better from him. Same thing from Sean Manaya. 4.44 ERA last year. Again, was not very good. But when he's on, he is a very good pitcher. He has great potential, I think, to be a good starter. He's obviously not a three starter on a championship team. Our pitching rotation definitely needs some help, but if we are in a position to make a playoff push at the deadline, we could flip any of our prospects for guys that are high end starters. Adrian Hauser, Ford starter, signed him from Milwaukee last year, had a four one two ERA last year. Again, not great. I'm not going to sound like a broken record with this. I'm going to try to speed through this as fast as I can. Tyler McGill, last year with the Mets, also struggled 4.7. Had a lot of promise coming up. He's shown flashes of brilliance, shown flashes of what he could be. He's looked great in spring training in real life this year. Hopefully that translates to the game. I don't know how much that will. I doubt it will. It doesn't, usually. If they're using past stats, he's going to be awful. Oh, well. Not much you could do about that. Kodai Senga's injury is a big blow to this rotation. You can see how the quality of this rotation just drops off so drastically because of the injury to Kodai Senga. Taking a look at injuries, we have a torn ACL from Ronnie Mauricio, which he got in the Dominican League. Was another one of those baby Mets that I did not mention, along with Beatty, Vientos, and Alvarez. He had a lot of promise last year. Could have been our starting third baseman this year, but... Obviously, the injury threw a huge wrench into plans, a monkey wrench into plans, and he will not be playing at all this year, I'm pretty sure, out six months, so he's going to come back in September. So, yeah, he's not going to be postseason eligible, so there's no chance that he's going to be playing for us. David Peterson, also out two months. He would have had a spot on this rotation as well. He's another guy that's just like Tyler and McGill, has shown flashes of brilliance that you know the stuff is there, the potential is there. He just has not unlocked to that next step of consistency. And Max Kranich, he's a minor league pitcher. I don't know why he's on the major league roster, but he should be a guy that we have in the minors. Taking a look at our bullpen. We got Cole Solcer, who we got from the Diamondbacks last year. Signed him as a free agent this year. And he doesn't have much big league time. He played last year for the Diamondbacks the year before with the Miami Marlins has not shown much so far. So there's a lot of question marks pitching wise with this team for sure. It's much worse than it was 
Michael Tonkin, also on this team last year, played for the Atlanta Braves. He wasn't terrible last year. He was middle of the road. He was average last year. Could be asking for a little bit more from him, but the same thing, the same product won't be terrible. But he might have to step up because our bullpen is definitely not the quality of the Atlanta bullpen. So we're going to need those guys that are decent to take that step forward, to take that next step. Michael Tonkin is one of those guys. Jorge Lopez, a guy that I have, I'm not going to beat around the bush, literally no hope for, honestly. 2022 was an all-star with Baltimore, had a 1.68 ERA, it was great, but since then has just been god-awful, like terrible. And you see it last year, 2023, between Baltimore, Miami, and Minnesota, the best ERA he had was a 5.09 ERA as a twin. It's just, it's not been good. Hopefully he can recapture that 2022 version of himself. It would be great for us. I don't have much hope there. Adam Ottavino, we've had him for the last couple of years. Been very reliable, but at some point, the age is going to start kicking in. He's 38 years old. He's not going to go be amazing for much longer. Thankfully, I believe his contract expires at the end of the season. So he's either going to retire or we're going to let him go before age gets to him and he starts really struggling. Hopefully he has one more good year in him before we let him go. Then Brooks Raley got him from Tampa Bay last year. Or not last year, but last year was his first year as a Met. Was very, very good. He's been very, very good the last two years. 2.8 last year with the Mets and a 2.68 the year before in Tampa Bay. He's been one of the best signings that we've had recently. 35 years old, so also similar to Adovino, but not as, you know big of a case where you hope the age doesn't kick in right now he's still got a few more good years in him you know putting up a 2.8 at 34 years old is good so even if he drops off just a little bit that'll still be pretty good for most relievers and then obviously Edwin Diaz missing all the last year after the leg injury that he sustained in the World Baseball Classic celebrating not even playing but he's finally back and he's hopefully he could be a catalyst, a good leader in the clubhouse. He's what we need if we're going to succeed at all. So let's see what else. That is a look at the New York Mets. Let's take a look at our top prospects. So here we have Jet Williams, ranked 37th in AA. Does he have a, what's it called? Does he have an ETA on his BNN page? Let's see. He, I don't think he does yet. No, he doesn't. He will in the top prospect screen if I go over there. So if I go to prospect pipeline, here we go. So if I go to top 100 Mets, there you go. So Jet Williams ETA is this year. Luis Angel Acuna, shortstop, very good potential. ETA is next year. He's, in case the last name looks familiar, pretty sure you've heard it by now. It's Ronald Acuna Jr.'s brother. We got him in a trade with the Texas Rangers last year, the one that I believe sent, yes, the one that sent Max Scherzer over to Texas. We got him in exchange. One thing that Steve Cohen did do really well last year was he was not willing to get finessed. He made sure that he got really good prospects for the big names that he traded, Justin Verlander, and Max Scherzer, even Tommy Pham and David Robertson, guys that we had last year that were tearing it up, having a really good year on a really bad team. Thankfully, we were able to get them out, but not get terrible return. We've got some great prospects, and three of the top five prospects that we have in our pipeline are from those trades. Third, Ronnie Mauricio, I already mentioned it. He's not, he's still prospect eligible hasn't met that service time requirement to be taken off the list so he's still here in the meantime and he's going to be here for the foreseeable future obviously with his torn acl ryan clifford fourth we got him in the max scherzer trade from houston he is his eta is supposed to be next year as well he's got good potential but it's also one of those guys where 
if we stock up and become really good next year, these guys could be used as trade chips to possibly make this team better. And who knows, if the team's really good this year, we could use those guys as trade chips to get starting pitching, like I mentioned before. Drew Gilbert, number five, also acquired in the Houston Astros trade. His ETA is also next year, but we'll be starting the year in AA with Binghamton. Kevin Parada, sixth prospect in our system. We drafted him a couple years back, either last year or two years ago. I don't remember, but <laughs> he's supposed to enter the big leagues this year. Unfortunately, we are so deep in our infield, and a lot of our top prospects are infielders. So besides Drew Gilbert, I feel like a lot of these guys could be expendable if we become a good team. Even Kevin Parada, you know, being a catcher with Francisco Alvarez, Pete Alonso at first base. It could all be depending on what we do with Pete Alonso because he is on an expiring deal. I'm going to try to bring him back, see if he's willing. Ronnie Mauricio, Luis Anel Acuna, Jet Williams. Unless they can play the outfield, they might get flipped for other prospects. See, like Jet Williams can play second and shortstop, but that's blocked by McNeil and Lindor. Luis Angel Acuna can only play shortstop. So that's not good for us. Could try to teach them a new position. Ronnie Mauricio obviously plays third base. He was supposed to be our starting third baseman, like I mentioned before. And Ryan Clifford, I believe he can play outfield. Yes, he can. He's a left fielder and a right fielder. So he's one of the guys that I could try to hold on to out of all these guys that I consider expendable. And we have other prospects, but those are way far down the line from being called up to the main Mets team. So if I go back to my office and set up the control options, let's see. So we got Carlos Mendoza to set up the lineups. Carlos Mendoza to set the pitching staff, all that. We'll do most of these, and then minor league managers can manage the pitching staffs, player strategy, and development focus. That's all good. I have no problem with that. Let's configure the continue button. For, I think that's all good. I'll do one day for all during the regular season and the off season. So that's all good. If I go back to the office, control options are all good. If you're new to Out of the Park, you might want to check out our tutorials page on YouTube. You can press F1 on any page for detailed help about that page. You don't need the tutorials, guys. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to show you guys the ropes on this game, how everything works, how to manage, all that. There's no preseason. Interesting, there's no spring training, so we get thrown right into the regular season. But we start on the 9th. So there should still be spring training, but there isn't, which is interesting. The draft pool is available for inspection, as is the current draft order. So there's all that. We have the 19th pick in the upcoming draft. Obviously with the draft lottery, the Cleveland Guardians have the first pick in the draft. Let's take a look at the mock draft. Who's here? Nick Kurtz is predicted to be the first pick. Funny name. We're predicted to take Derek Curiel, center fielder. But that's something that we're going to look more at during the draft phase when that comes up around July. Because they periodically update the mock draft, so I'm going to wait until then. As we got a message from Steve Cohen with goals, this screen is where all of your news and email will be stored. If you receive important news or mail, you will be automatically brought here directly from whatever screen you were on previously, but be sure to check back frequently for all other messages. You can change what news and mail you will receive with these settings. Okay, so let's see with PM from Steve Cohen with the goals. Welcome to the New York Mets organization. I trust that our working relation will be a good one. I will submit some new goals each year that I would like to see you accomplish, as well as winning on the field and turning a profit. Completing these goals is the best way to keep me happy. Achieve a winning record this season, which is possible. Build a top six minor league system. So they want us to rebuild the farm system while also being a winning ball club. Tough. We can make it happen, though. Increase the fan interest and keep building your team up in order to reach the playoffs in the next four seasons, which we can definitely do. We should be a competitor, if not this year, next year. I will check in periodically throughout the year with your progress. Good luck. So we got to do a lot of good drafting. I don't know exactly where our farm system ranks right now. Uh, let's see. Does it have farm system rankings? 
here we go, reports and info, minor league system rankings, here we go, so we are currently, shoot, we're 21st, we have to work our way up, big time, okay, so that's all for that, we'll delete that message, then we will, let's see, what should I do now, let's take a look at the MLB news, the league news, here we go, the top 100 prospects was published. Jackson Holiday leads the way. Ethan Salas second for the Padres. Third, Jackson Churio. Fourth, Wyatt Langford. Fifth, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He is here. Sixth, Evan Carter. Seventh, Paul Skeens. Eighth, Jackson Job. Ninth, Pico Armstrong. And tenth is Jordan Lawler. So we can view the full list and the top prospects report from the reports menu. The top minor league systems report has been updated as well. And there's the article about us being the new GM. Hope springs eternal. At least that was the mood at the press conference when it was announced that Jim Smith would be the new GM of the New York Mets. Team owners and fans are really enthused about the signing and are looking forward to the upcoming season. I'm very honored to be working for the fans in New York. We have several questions to resolve and a wholesale team assessment to perform, along with time constraints to consider, Jim Smith told reporters at the press conference. Baseball is a year-round job these days, and I'm fortunate to be working with the Mets ownership. So that should be everything that is covered in this first episode. This first episode was just meant to be used as a preview of the team. Tomorrow, our next episode, we really get into the nitty gritty and we really try to build the team. So I'm gonna move forward one day and that's gonna do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want more. My name is CC Sports saying so long. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Out of the Park. Peace out.